Here we go. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all, it's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. The Lord is your what? Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, in Jesus I am strong. Come on. In Jesus I am strong. But sometimes with us, we are weak, amen? But he is strong, so so can we. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning for those watching online. God is control. Can you give God some praise in the house one more time? Because he's with you, he's he's in you, he's around you, he's over you. Praise the Lord. So good to see some smiling faces. This is the time you can smile. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Some of them have good smirks, not smiles yet, no teeth. It does cause your facial muscles, just to let you know. Less work. If anybody wants to do less work, raise your hand. You want to do less work? Smile. Less, less muscles to smile, but to frown, you are going to wear yourself out. Mm. Good, morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here this morning. Um, so as you know, I've been, I couldn't walk for some time and um, hurt myself, hurt my two back muscles. And praise the Lord, God, me and my son were working and I sledged, I hammered my ankle full speed. Uh, wasn't it full speed? We were whacking and I was whacking and I missed the whole board and hit my ankle. And I definitely thought I shattered my ankle, but praise the Lord, God was with me because I said, God, I don't need a broken ankle. So I don't have a broken ankle. <laughs> But, uh, but the only, and everything was great until I decided to do medical treatment on it and cover it and, you know, baby it after four or five days and it got infected <laughs> after I babied it. But anyhow, we're all good now, but pulling my muscles in the back, it just, I could not walk at all. It was, um, I was 150 years old and still can't move. <laughs> but praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. Father, we are so grateful for who you are. You are a good and great God. We praise you. We thank you. We just ask right now that you would just continue to have your way in us and through us as we keep you at the focus. And God, as we look at our core values, help us, Lord, to truly put you as the highest value in the way we live our life, the way we speak, the way we treat others. Most importantly, the way we put you first in all things. God, as we continue to live and give, may you just touch your people in a special way. Touch those who watch. May they receive a blessing and a touch. Even wherever they listen to the message, God, we just ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. are you ready? I want to start a journey this morning with you as we continue in our core values. Our core values. I, I don't know about you. But how many remember last week? How many remember the week before that? That's what I want you to remember. <laughs> the last time we were together, we started our core values together, living our core values. And we um, talked about Bible-centered, Bible-centered. And the definition for Bible-centered was choosing to study daily. Someone say daily. 
meditate on, believe God's word, rely on the Holy Spirit to gain understanding, closeness with God, and guidance to become more Christ-like. That is being Bible-centered. That is a core value that we as a church want to share. That everything that we do is Bible-centered. We get into a life sometimes and we say we have a Bible, but we don't read the Bible. It's like having food on the table, but you don't eat. How many know that it's only when you eat the food that's on the table that you're going to nourish your body? So if we were to eat like we read our Bibles, how healthy would you be? Think about that, because you have a spiritual being in you. And if you don't feed the spiritual person, then the flesh grows, not the spirit man. See, And so that's why we want to be Christ-centered, so that everything we do here at Salem First Assembly, we want to make sure that the Bible is the focal point, that the people of God are studying daily, they're meditating, they're believing God's word, relying on the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit could give you understanding and brings closeness, and he guides us in life. This is important. So these are, I'm going to show you our 10 core values that we're going to be going under. And I put it into a little bit of a paragraph for you. So we're all going to get to know this. And hopefully you can memorize this and you can really get to know the definition. And they may not be in order according to the way I did this today. But all 10 are in one session today. And we're going to just be saying this for the series and then I'd like you to try to just memorize what our core values are. Here are our core values. Let's say this together. Ready? We are a body of Bible-centered believers who have experienced God. I haven't heard you. Hello. And want to share his unconditional love and genuine forgiveness with others. We recognize the power of prayer and the strength of unity through connecting fellowship. We are disciples that serve Jesus Christ to do his work and to build his kingdom. We are called to reach the lost as we live dependent on the Holy Spirit to lead and empower us as we passionately worship God and live to influence all generations until all see Jesus. Someone say praise the Lord. Every one of those highlighted um, words our, our core values that we're going to be going through. Like I said, they may not be in order, but these are. And why are we doing this? Before we do our Vision Sunday, before we start to say, this is how we're going to operate. This is how we are going to be as a body in Christ. This is how we're going to assimilate individuals when they come into the church, how they can connect to the church, find out their giftings so that their giftings, their personhood, their what God's doing in them, they can put it to the family family of God, the body of Christ, so they can actually strengthen the body because everybody needs somebody sometimes. And in the body of Christ, we need somebody all the time. We need Jesus and we need each other. Amen. And so we're going to be doing this uh, for the, the series, and then we're going to have things around the church to remind you of your core values. And I want you to think about these core values, Bible-centered, unconditional love, genuine forgiveness, power of prayer, connecting fellowship, disciples that serve, reach, reaching the lost, uh, dependent on the Holy Spirit, passionate worship, and influence in all generations. This is what we are all supposed to do. Now, I recognize your own personal core values may differ a little bit, but this body of Christ right here is going to focus and everything we do is going to be focused around our core values. When we do ministry, it's going to be focused around our core values. When we make decisions, it's going to be focused around our core values. Why? Because core values are the things we value. We value every generation. We value the, uh, the aspect that we are called to serve. We are not just called to sit. We are called to serve. We are called to participate. Look at your neighbor and say, God has asked for participation, not spectation. Spe not a spectator, but a participator. Don't spit on the person when you say that. You know, those P words there. I'll tell you what. How many of you ever seen Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast. I almost broke out in the song when I, when I thought, you know, but I thought I better not do that. <coughs> The Beauty and the Beast is a beautiful story, and as we talk today about unconditional love, 
Most people fight with unconditional love. They fight with love. A lot of people, you know, they talk about love, but they don't know, they don't know what love really is, especially unconditional love. It's all conditional love. I, I'm, I'll, someone will love me if I do the right things. Uh, someone will love me if I say the right things. But when we talk about unconditional love, this is what God loves us with. God, God's love is unconditional, and, and we're going to talk about that. And when I, when I started thinking about Beauty and the Beast, I, I, th- I started to think about Belle. You know, when, when she comes into the narrative and you read this, and when you watch it, the story for the first time, how, how many have never seen the story of Beauty and the Beast? Anybody at all? Okay, okay, fantastic. You, you, all, you all know your, your little stories here. Good. So here's Belle comes in, and she come in for her father. Her father was captured, and she come in to find her father. She finds her father and then takes the place for her father so her father can be free. Some would say sacrificial. So here is Belle with a big heart, sacrifice her own life for the sake of her father. Her father goes free, and now she's put in prison, and now she's in prison, and she's in prison in the same house of this beast, this beast who just is, has, a, has a bad attitude. Huh? You, you know a few people like that? They act like a beast. They have a bad attitude. They're just giant grumpies. Because this beast has displayed a self-centered, dark, ugly character, and yet Belle continues to be kind, continues to be kind. So much, so much kindness continues to come out of her that she starts to impact the beast, where the beast starts to show uh, signs of kindness and and compassion. And, And before you know it, you see his character starting to change where he himself then lets Belle go because she's concerned for her father. And he knows that she's the only hope that he has left unless he's going to stay a beast forever. And yet, his this beast finally learns how to sacrifice and fetch the one that was going to set him free, go. I said to myself, sometimes, sometimes Walt Disney gets the story right, describes it. There's a couple of things I find in the characters of Walt Disney the Lion King, there's some principles in there about evil and about all different things sometimes again. And I think when you talk about unconditional love, you can see this in the character of Belle. I I want you to understand that. That's the same character, get this now, that's the same character that should be in you and I. But in the reality of life, saints, listen, I've seen this more times than I hate to say, but there, there are many believers who do not carry the unconditional love. It's conditional. Bell gives us a great picture of what it is supposed to look like. Because unconditional love is in demonstration, in action. Uh, Unconditional love is sacrificial. uh, Sacrificial love is is, is a beautiful thing. John, let's, let's do this right here. This is our core value definition for unconditional love. Extending God's love to others regardless of who they are, serving them with compassion, humility, and acceptance. I want you to get that for a moment. Unconditional love, if we're going to be a group, if we're going to be a people, if we're going to be a congregation, if we're going to be a body, extending God's love because you have experienced God's unconditional love. You didn't deserve it, but he gave it to you anyhow. But the problem is we don't often give it to others. Because if that person especially people in your family, if that person doesn't do what I want them to do, then you know what? Cut them off. Extending God's love to others regardless of who they are, serving them with what? Compassion, humility, acceptance. It's, unconditional love is about sacrifice. Unconditional sacrifice. It's loving someone, even though they don't deserve it, you still care for them. You're still willing to help them. You're still willing to do something for them, you know, even when they're not like you. So many times, just because there's people out in the world, then they're downright, yeah, there are some people downright evil. There are some time people who seem evil, but they're not. They're just, they're just lost. They're all, they're just lost. And just because they are who they are, people just so quick to say mean things about them. Just because they don't like their personality and they don't like this about them. You know what? Listen, saint. Listen, Christian. God tells you to love your enemies. God wants you to love those who maybe don't love you. 
Hello. If you're going to be a body of Christ who says we're going to take that same love God has given us, it needs to be seen in you too. And if it's not seen in you, maybe you need to ask yourself, are you really demonstrating God's love? You know, I've had a chance to love people even when they don't love me, even when they're unkind. Trust me. <laughs> there are people who are unkind. Have you ever met one? In the process of it, we need to remind ourselves. Someone say, remind yourself of how God looks like. God was on the cross. God's love looks like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Extending God's love to others, regardless, regardless of who they are, serving them with compassion, humility, and acceptance. You accept who they are. You do not accept what they do but you accept who they are at that present time. You can't help someone if you don't take them right where they are. Jesus took everybody right where they are, but he didn't leave them there. Hello. He brought them to the place of growth. That's what we're supposed to do. When someone comes in, if, if a person came in, if a, a homeless person came in, and that homeless person really did not... Uh, smell very well. I pray, I pray there would be someone in the congregation could get past the smell and sit right next to that person and love that person like Jesus would love him. The same one that would take a leper, a leper and touch him when everybody didn't want to come near. Jesus didn't act that way. He acted in love. And love is what changes hearts. And when someone sees something like that in you, it's going to change all the equations because they're going to see what love looks like because there's a lot of people who haven't seen what love looks like. So saints, we need, we need a lot. We need work. There is about five Greek words about love, four main words that most people know. The first one is agape. That's unconditional love given. It's sacrificial. It's... It transcends and persists, and regardless of circumstances, God's agape is this unconditional love that he says, you know what, I'm giving it to you, not because you deserve it, because I love you. He just, it's there for you to receive. Phileo love is usually form a brotherly love. That's where Philadelphia comes from. You see a lot of love in Philadelphia, don't we? But that's simply love between friends. And then eros is a sexual love. It's a romantic love. And so whenever they use this type of eros love, it's meaning intimate, uh, uh, sexual love. I, I want you to understand something. We just have one word for an I English language. It's called love. But that's not how coin Greek was. So whatever love was used gave you the indication. We get understanding from the narrative of when we put love in there. If I say I love pizza, you understand I'm not like hugging my pizza while I eat it. That's why Pastor had cheese all over his chest and his face. Uh, he was hugging his pizza again. Now, if you saw me eat, you probably think that's what happened. <laughs> and then there's storage. Storage is a love that happens between parent and child. It's this, it's this sibling uh, love. It's, it, it's, it's, it, it could even feel a little bit like agape in, in some conditions, but, but it's just this natural love, like you love them because they're your blood. You love them because they're part of who you are. Richard Harvinson said this, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. There is nothing you can do to make God love you less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite, and perfect. I want you to understand that unconditional love means you can't earn God's love. It's something that he gave you. Love. God is love. Look what this says here in 1 John 3, 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, so we are. God gave us this love, and when God gives us this love, something wonderful takes place. Our Heavenly Father loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son on the cross. I don't know if you get this or not, but if someone really did something for you in this, in this realm right now, and they died for you, they, they took your bullet, you would have the tremendous awe of this person. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus sacrificed unconditionally, overwhelmingly, because he wanted to make you an heir of the kingdom of God. 
He did this even before you even knew him. This is love is. Love is a beautiful thing. John 4 tells us this. Dear friends, let us love one another. I'm going to want to break out in song here, but I won't. For love comes from God, and everyone who loved has been born of God and knoweth God. Whoever does not love does not know God because what? Come on, say it down. God is love. Say it again. God is love. It's his characteristic. It's who he is. If someone had to describe you in one word, what would they describe you as? I don't want to hear it. But if, you, if someone in your family, and you want to do something really great, go up to them and say, hey, describe me in one word. See what they say. Now, depending on the day you ask them, the word may be different. But what one word? How would they describe that? Because to describe Jesus, God, if you know God, God says God is love. It's his character. It's who he is. I think this is important for all of us to understand. Let us love one another. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Did you catch that? That you can't love other people the way you need to love them until you understand God's love. I tell this all the time in relationship. People say, well, I don't understand this love. You know, I never was loved like you're talking about, Pastor. I didn't have a, a father that loved me. I didn't have a mother that loved me. And so you're talking there's a father in heaven that loves me? I don't get it. I totally get that part. I really do. But when you get in a relationship with the Father of Heaven, you're going to sense His love. You're going to start feeling His love. You're going to start knowing His love because you're going to get into His Word, and His Word's going to get into you. It's the Father's going to be speaking for the very breath right into your heart. And when the Father speaks through His Word, right the breath right into your heart, all of a sudden you get to know who God is because God's Word is living and sharper than a two-edged sword. God's Word is living. And when we love one another, it's a sign that we love God and we know God because we're loving them even when, even when, maybe they're not doing everything that they're supposed to do, but you love them anyhow. We want to be a body that communicates unconditional love, not conditional love, not to be sassy and cranky and grumpy. How many know Grumpy Cat? How many know Grumpy Cat? Anybody? Some, some of you could win the award for Grumpy Cat. That's, that's something you need to work on. I mean, just look at this cat. I have a picture of him every day. I look at him in my office because someone gave me to him one time and said, hey, are you used? And they made a little joke about it. And I'm like, I love this. I'm going to keep this in front of me. Because Grumpy Cat, you just look at him and they look grumpy. The cat just looks grumpy. But God's not asking us to be grumpy. He's asking us to be what? Loving. Say something nice to someone next to you. Turn around. Say something nice to them. Go ahead. You look beautiful. Go ahead. Say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Say, some, say something really nice. <laughs> Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody needs to be loved, and they want to be loved. And God says, I so loved you that I gave up my son for you. And if God was willing to do that for you, what are you willing to do for others? Because we're always thinking about us. How we live our whole life about us. Small world. Small world. I wouldn't want to do that. I've been down that line. I cut that cord a long time ago. You see, the reality of you and I, we need to understand about this unconditional love that God has given us. It's incredible. Damn right, incredible. Listen to what Psalm says to us. Psalms 103, great chapter. Verse 8 and 11 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, that just being angry, with us or keep his anger forever. He does not to deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. Come on, give, give God some praise in the house of the Lord. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Man, you know what he's saying to you? He said, Bro, he says, son and daughter, I'm going to love you even when you're, you're not really where you need to be. I'm going to still love you, but I'm going to love you where you need to be. God will not keep you right where you, want, you, you are. He's not going to keep you there. He's going to challenge you. 
He's going to try to speak to you, but if you don't have ears to hear and heart to listen, God's going to say, okay, but what you sow is because what you really don't want to move. You, do, you know, I shall not be moved. God says, okay, fine. Just remember the consequences are in your case, not mine, because I have trying to love you to the certain destination, but you have the one to refuse to walk that way. God's love is, God's love is to accept freely and willingly It's a promise for you and I to receive on a daily basis. The whole beautiful story starts as Christmas, right? Jesus come into the world, and he brings great joy to all people. And then all of a sudden on Easter, he finally lays down his life. And on the, on the third day, he rises from the dead just like he said and defeats sin, death, and the grave. And now we have this immense love story. And people say to me all the time, well, I don't know about love, Pastor. It's right in front of you. It's in the scriptures. God is all around you showing love. And when people come in, no matter where they come from, love them where they're at to take them where they need to be. Don't mock them. Don't criticize them. Don't look at them in any strange way. Your responsibility is to love Jesus on them so they can see something they haven't experienced. I don't care what kind of house you grew up in. People I know have grown up one way and another way. What counts is that love is felt and love is known and love is understood what love is. Love is about really giving not about getting. Let me take you on a journey. Get your seatbelt on. Look at your neighbor and ask him, your seatbelt taken? Click it in. Click it or tick it. <laughs> Let's take a journey. How to walk in God's unconditional love. Because at first step comes with believing. You gotta believe. God's love gives eternal life. You gotta believe that. John 3, 14 and 15, look what it says. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. You, when you understand that Jesus Christ died for your sins, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that he has given us life and life more abundantly. I want you to understand something. When you believe God came to give you his love, he provides eternal life. Put your hands together and thank God that God's given you eternal life. Come on now. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Look at this now. When you believe, number two, when you believe, you experience sacrificial love. You know, when you say, I don't know much about love, well, just look at the love or the demonstration of Jesus Christ. Let's say you have seen very little bit of love from people. I want you to look at what God has done for you. For God so loved the world that he what? What did he do? He gave. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Sacrificial love. The greatest type of love is sacrificial love. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you sacrificed something to to love someone else? Sacrifice. When's the last time you didn't think of yourself, you thought of somebody else? When's the last time, you know, you took your out-to-eat money and you gave it away? That's sacrificial. You deny yourself for the benefit of someone else that you love. That's sacrificial. That's what Jesus Christ did for you and I. When we believe, when we believe, we automatically experience what sacrificial love looks like. We understand, oh, God, you love me that much. It's credible. Number three. We receive God's love, you, uh, and you are called to give his love to others. So you receive it, and you got to give it. So if God's given you this love, you need to now give his love. John, 1 John 3, 23 and 24, look what it is. And this is the command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he's commanded us, those who obey his commands live in him. Get that? Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us, for we know by the spirit he gave us. Someone say connection. You see, this is the beautiful part, is that when you understand, when you understand 
that Jesus Christ loved one another as he's commanded us to do. God says, listen, I want you to understand this. God, you've freely you receive, freely you. Freely you receive, freely you give. It's not when you feel like it. I don't really feel like loving that person right now. Could you imagine, you know, you get to heaven and you're standing before the Lord and God says, ah, oh, man, what a rough day. You know, I really don't feel like uh, really loving this person right now. I'm kind of tired. I, you know what? Not good, is it? Not a good day for you. Yet we do that to people all the time. You know what? I just don't feel like loving that person right now. You know, they're just getting underneath my skin. So does a splinter. What do you do, though? You don't just leave it there. You take it out, don't you? You do something. Well, let's just do something with the people that God brings into your life because there's a reason for that. Number four, when you believe, you receive unconditional love. Look with this, one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 5, 7, and 8. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare to even die. But, but, God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Someone say praise the Lord. Lord. That means that Jesus loved us before we deserved it. So I started asking myself a question. I'm going to go over to my table now. I started asking myself a question. And the question that I had to ask was, Lord, how do I define what love, uh, unconditional love is? I mean, if I was to ask you, Give me your definition of love. What is love to you? Is love about someone giving you something or getting something? Is love about somehow you benefit? What is your definition of love? Because when you look at biblical definition of love, you see sacrifice. You see um, things that are real tangible. It's giving. It's forgiving. It's being consistent and selfless and caring and other focused, really. Other focus, not self-focus, but other focus. I I want you to think right now, give me one thing in Scripture that Jesus did for himself. You're not going to find many things that Jesus did for himself. And if he did something for himself, there was a reason, a a greater interest. Because Jesus was always thinking about others. Matter of fact, if I could even go one step further, Jesus was always thinking about you. And so I said to myself, you know, how can I, um, how can I, uh, uh, Time Mirror, why don't you come here for a minute? You can help me out a little bit. So I started thinking, how can I uh, exhibit unconditional love? And so um, you're going to have some fun today. And so sometimes we look at love and we see it as an egg. Uh, We see love as being fragile. We see love being, um, you know, it, it, it looks beautiful. And, and sometimes people go into uh, marriage and, and they say, God and the man and the woman, here's three. Like an egg has a shell and a yolk and a white, three. Now, I want you to take this so-called love that in relationship, human relationship, the thing that's fragile because, Lord, behold, in a relationship, you know, if you don't do what I want you to do, or if you just, you know, if you, you, I'm not going to love you anymore. So I want you just to drop it into this bucket. Ain't that fun to do in church, huh? Look at that. Okay, go up high. Just make sure you go underneath it, okay? All right. You just drop it. It didn't break. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do something different here. All right. Go higher. So all of a sudden... The relationship handled it pretty good. Go higher. Oh! Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have good news. All the relationship starts to dribble. And before you know it, cracks and falls apart. Why? Why? It fell apart because of this human type of love. It's, it's fragile. It's, uh, it's conditional. But this is my pet rock. Now, I don't even know if Aaron would know this, but this was made with my kids. 
in 1994 in the summer. And so we painted it. We actually put little googly eyes on it and little pipe things, and we made it into a spider. And I had this in my office for the longest time, but the googly eyes and the spider legs fell off. But I kept the rock. And there I see it right there, 1994, made with the kids' summer. So pick that up, and I want you to drop this. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I want to show you a little bit about a rock being unconditional love. And you say, a rock, Pastor? Well, just remember the scriptures are very clear about a rock. Jesus is a rock, isn't he? You see, the egg is, is, is fragile, and when problems come and pain comes and pressure comes, what we think in our relationship, it just dis disintegrates into a real mess. And this is the effect of what divorce really is. Divorce is a mess, especially when kids are involved. It's just a mess. Whenever separation and stuff takes place, it's a mess. And yet God wants to come in and say, you know what, even though there's a mess, I, I, I am a solid rock. And when you have that rock in your hand, can you feel it? Put it in the other hand. Can you feel it? Has some density to it, does it? Has some, has some strength. You see, the rock is solid. It, it, a rock is dependable. Um, you can stand on it. Um, you can, uh, it's unchanging in nature. This is going to be a rock. No matter the storms come, no matter rain comes, whatever happens, it doesn't change. It's consistently there. It's unaffected by its surrounding atmospheres. It's going to stay together as a rock. I, I want you to understand, uh, drop the rock. Just drop it, not on your foot. Drop like a rock. Look at this. It's still together. Here, drop it again. Good thing I built the thing strong. Still a rock. God's unfailing love, God's unconditional love is solid. It's, it's there. It doesn't change. Here, come over here. Hold this. And But sometimes in life, we take God's love and we try to bury it. You know, we just try to bury it. And we don't want to deal with it. And we just say, well, God doesn't love me. And we just go on with life. And we cover it up. And it's not very, very important. And, and sometimes in life, we want to even then submerge it. You know, we try to just get it under something and submerge it underneath the water or something like this. You're going to have nice, clean hands today. Okay? And we just, we don't want to deal with it. And yet, no matter what, try to bury in God's love, try to forsake God's love, try to uh, just try to do all kind of things to it, it's still solid. It's still there. It's still dependable. It's right there, ready for you to receive. The problem is you have to know God's love. God's love is powerful. Don't do that. No, you just miss. Give me your hands. Oh, boy. The kids just want to play. You can come up later. <laughs> yeah. So that being said, let me ask you a question. What do you want to put your base on? Something that's solid or something that looks like this? It's not a hard question. <laughs> something that's consistent and solid. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. you. Did great. Give her a hand. God so loves you that while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for you. You see, you say, I don't care what you go through in life. God's love is there for you, but you have to believe it and you have to receive it. And when you do, it will change your life like drastically. That's what God wants to do in you and through you and around you. It's the beautiful thing of God's unconditional love. Look at five. When you believe, you learn God is love. We talked about this. Dear friends, let us love one another. Someone say love one another. Mm. For love comes from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not, does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his love as an anointing, sac an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, 
since God has so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Did you get that? Did you get it? No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I want you to get verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to, we ought, we ought, we also ought, get it, to love one another. If, if you receive God's love, God says you got to give it out. But did you notice it doesn't say to who? Only to certain ones. Love is love. And God wants us to love all people, no matter where they're at, to help them to where they need to be. When people don't understand God's love, is because they don't understand something. So if they don't understand it, someone needs to take the time to explain it to them. Now, if they don't care at that moment, and they just don't care, go on to the next person. They're not interested. And so they'll have to go through some hardships and some problems in life, and God will make sure, you know, that he's there to pick up the pieces when it comes to that point. There are sometimes people are not ready to receive the, the, the goodness and greatness of God. Number six, when you believe, you learn God's love is always there. Someone say always there. Always. I like this. This is so, this helps me out every single day of my life to know that my God is right by my side. He has me. He's under me. He's over me. He's on the side of me. He goes before me. And in God, I have favor. You have favor. Look at your neighbor and say, you have favor when you're with God. You have favor when you're with God. You have favor. Psalms 36, 5. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Your justice like the great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love, both high and low among men. Find refuge in the shadow of your wings. Come on. How many want to find some refuge in God? When you have a tough day, you can go to God and say, God, oh, I want to just get underneath your wing. Oh, praise the Lord. Number seven, when you believe, you experience God's steadfast love. We've mentioned this a little bit already, God's steadfast love. Isaiah 54, 10. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall never depart from you. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. God's love is there. Lamentations 3 says this to us, 22, 24. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Someone say never fails. No, there's a song a long time ago that God never fails, never fails. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Can you give God some praise in the house of the Lord? Great is his love. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Number eight. Number eight. When you believe, you learn the depth of God's love that has been given to us. When you believe, you get to learn the depth of God's love. And this is the thing. People don't know the love of God because they see themselves the way they see themselves in a mirror. You see, most people can't understand how great God is because they don't feel they're valued. They don't feel like they're all that in a bag of chips. You see, we listen to our own lies when we look in the mirror. We listen to what people say about us. You know, some people are not always encouraged, and they'll say things about you that's just not true. And yet we'll listen to them. But we won't listen to what God says about us. I want you to understand something. God's depth of his love grows deeper when you get to know the heart of God through his word. Listen to what Ephesians 2 says. Really powerful. But because of his great love, someone say great love. Great. Mm, mm, mm. This is for us. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Come on. Someone say, God has a plan. Oh, so when we look at God's unconditional love that we have received, we need to be people, a body of Christ, that's willing to love others too. Because more people want love. They just need to see it. You can talk about love till you're blue in the face, but people will not, um, they won't really get a hunger for it until they start to experience it and they start to see what God's love is all about. God's love has to be a core value here at our church. It has to be a core value in your own life. You can't just go through the motions. Loving people is loving people, period. Not when you feel like it. Hello, come on now. How many times you go, we live our life because of by feelings? Is that how I feel? I, I, I don't feel like it. Yeah, there's a lot of things you don't feel like it. Could you imagine if Jesus didn't feel like going to the cross? You know, I know I need to go, that's why I came. But you know, Father, you know, I want this cup to pass for me because I don't feel like it. What kind of prayer would that have been? No, no. He knew exactly why he came, and he knew what was going to happen to him. And so he was quite aware of the burden that was going to be upon his body as he became the sin offering that would take away all the sins of the world. Now I your question, do you struggle with love? <coughs> when, if I was to say, I love you, would you believe it? Do you feel loved? I mean, do you think you're loved? And let me ask you another question. How many people in your life, you would know for a shadow of a doubt that they love you. You see, a lot of times, people have a hard time with this love factor. And so if you're having a hard time loving yourself, you're going to have a hard time loving other people. That's why it's so important to really grapple with this understanding about God's love. Because you can't love others. You can't be God's love conduit if you don't really believe that he loves you. So a lot of times they, you struggle because you struggle receiving it. First of all, the Bible says you've got to believe to receive. You've got to believe that God so loved you that he died on the cross for you. You've got to believe that no matter what you've done, we'll be talking about forgiveness in, in time coming, but God's forgiven you. You may not forgive yourself, but God has forgiven you. This is important. Do you struggle? And if you struggle, God wants you to understand the importance of what love is. Love is powerful. Let me just read this last this scripture we've read already. I want to close with this. And this is the command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commands us. Those who obey his commands, that's important, those who obey his commands and live in him and he will be in them and this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the power of the spirit of God that lives in us. Can you stand to your feet? How many would just say there's days, there's days where you, you just don't feel very loved. Raise your hand. Just say, you know, there's days that just don't feel, yeah, yeah. I think all of us have moments when we, we just don't feel loved. But those are the moments and those are the days where you have to remind yourself of the greater love. Amen? Is the one who so loved you that he died for you. How, how many of you could say, yeah, I have a hard time loving other people, especially different than me? Yeah. To be honest, yeah. To be honest, it, it's, it's tough sometimes to, to love people who, who are different than you sometimes because you feel awkward. But, but just think of it this way. Love in, in God's language is across through every people and every nation. When you are concerned about the well-being of another person, when you love does not concern about whether I get favor with a person, uh, whether that person responds back to me, uh, whether that person receives me. Who cares? Jesus was on the cross, and they're making fun of him. And yet, what does he do? 
He loves them still by saying, Father, forgive them for they knew not what they're doing. He understands the ignorance in which they are living in. And we got to remember, when you love someone, when you care for someone, you just care for them because you're just being God's conduit to love other people right where they are, to be kind and compassionate and selfless. That's what God wants all of us. How many want to be a better lover for Jesus? Hmm? Yeah. The first thing is learn to love yourself. Learn to know you're valued. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop whispering. Stop listening to all that negativity that goes into your mind. Take, take captive of those things that come into your hearts and come into your mind or, or things that you remember that someone said. Because what you dwell upon, the food you eat, usually comes with the company you keep. So watch who, who's around you, who, who, who's feeding into you, because it's important. But understand God's love, and the more you get into the Word of God, the more the Word of God will get into you. You see, and before you know it, before you know it, all this other stuff ain't bothering you anymore, because you know what? You, 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 you're lost in God's Word. You know what God's Word says. You know what God's Word says. Because God's Word is a lamp unto your feet. It's a lamp, and the lamp back then were really small, and the lamp would only give enough for one step at a time. I'm going to pray for you. And if there's something upon your heart right now that the Spirit of God has spoken to your heart, never let the altars alter your choice, but let the altars alter your life as you spend some time in the presence of God and you just talk to God. We're so busy in the world, we're not spending time talking to God. We'll be talking about prayer, but prayer is important. And prayer in a church, coming together, believing God, it's powerful. It will change your life. Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that each one of us would grasp the depth of your love. How deep and how wide. And in that immense deepness of love, I ask God that you would help each person to, to get to experience that in you as they push in and as they start to learn to read your word. And Lord, not to let all the bells and whistles and all the things of this world that seems to attract our hearts and attract our time, that are all distractions of the enemy of our soul to still kill and destroy. But I pray, Father, that you rise up a standard and I rise up a battle. And I pray, God, that you would just go before your people in a marvelous way, Lord, and that they would experience your love and mercy even now. I pray, Father, that they would get in that word and in prayer that they would continue to spend that time in you daily and not focus on the things that drain them but focus on the one that fills them in the name of Jesus Father we ask these things amen amen can we give God some praise in the house of the Lord